And another finish by a powerful right knee. Oh, big knee, and Jim Miller is out. That hookup, knockout victory. Hey, guys, welcome back to Athlete Central. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most badass fighters in the MMA. Someone who will fight anyone, anytime, anywhere, Dan Hooker. He is a very experienced fighter who was exciting to watch, has vicious knees, and great knockout power. Not many people would want to stand and bang with the man from New Zealand. Today we're talking about Hooker's fighting career, lifestyle, and net worth. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Number 5. Fighting Career Hooker went into the UFC with a record of 10-4 in 2014. That year, he fought twice and made a mere $26,000 from one win and one loss. His next fight against Hatsuhiyoki was a bit more profitable because of the performance of the night bonus. He earned $70,000 in total. His next three fights were losses to Yair Rodriguez, Jason Knight, and a victory over Mark Adiva. He earned around $90,000 from those three fights in total, but that's when he moved up to lightweight and really jump-started the best years of his career. Hooker went on an impressive four-fight win streak against impressive names such as Ross Pearson, Mark Diacasey, Jim Miller, and current number two at welterweight, Gilbert Burns. Those win bonuses piled up and the newly minted contender made $280,000 from those four victories. That's when his contract was renegotiated and Dan started making some serious money. He took on veteran Edson Barbosa and unfortunately got brutally knocked out, but pocketing $85,000 for the defeat. He then went on another impressive three-fight win streak, this time against even more notable names like James Vick, Al Iaquinta, and Paul Felder. His pay for the three fights was a whopping $410,000 because he got two 50K bonuses. That Felder win gave him the biggest opportunity of his career against Destin Poirier. He Dustin Poirier, I'm gonna smash your face in. Meet me in New Zealand, 2020, and I'm gonna end you. He actually did pretty well against the number one contender, winning the first and the second round. If the second carried on for maybe 30 more seconds, Hooker might have got the finish because Dustin was seriously hurt. But Poirier pulled through and won the last three rounds convincingly to get the unanimous decision win. Hooker earned $170,000, putting on another fight of the night. He welcomed former Bellator champ Michael Chandler to the UFC next. Yeah, like they're going to give me the new toy? Like I'm going to break the new toy real quick. He got knocked down cold in the first round, but taking home $125,000. In his next fight on short notice against Nazrat Hakparast, he got his biggest ever paycheck, earning $236,000, 110 to show, 110 for winning, and 16000 in fight week incentive pay. His latest fight was a very short notice fight against one of the scariest guys at 155, Islam Makhachev. The UFC was desperate for a replacement, so they gave Dan a pay raise, bumping his contract to $150,000 to show. Hooker got submitted in the first round, but took home $166,000. His MMA career earnings are around $2 million, and his net worth is estimated to be around $2.5 million. Number 4. Other Endeavors Dan's main occupation, apart from being an MMA fighter, is running his own gym, the Combat Academy in Auckland, New Zealand. Hooker has always been a leader, and even at 18, when his coaches would be unavailable, he would take their role and lead the class. He opened up his own gym in 2018, and it was something he wanted to do for a long time. It's not just a business, he wanted to help develop MMA talent from his home nation of New Zealand. Don't be fooled though, fighting is still his main priority, the gym is just an addition. He makes some extra money doing what he loves and benefits the sport and his nation in the process. It doesn't get much better than that. Recently, though, he has not been able to operate the gym because of the strict regulations that New Zealand has imposed due to the pandemic. The government closed the gym, and Hooker couldn't even train at his main gym, City Kickboxing, with his head coach Eugene Behrman, which made it really tough to prepare for the Nasrat Hakparas fight. Other than the gym, Hooker has previously had a podcast that ran for a short period of time and recently did a short series on Conor McGregor's channel, The Mac Life, where he had a podcast with Oscar Willis where they drank. Number three, sponsorships. Let's talk about Hooker's sponsors. The fighter has special deals with the UFC's official sponsors, Venom and Crypto.com. The amount he makes from the sponsorships is currently unknown, but safe to say the Kiwi has benefited from the deals. 
Almost every fighter in the UFC has a betting sponsorship, and Hooker is no different. Dan is sponsored by Betcha Global, a company that takes bets on sports and esports. But what distinguishes them is the fact that people can bet using crypto and get their returns in cryptocurrency form. Pretty advanced, to be fair. Another sponsor of Hooker's is Raider Fight Gear. They are not a very big company, and Dan is their main brand ambassador. Their Instagram page only has five photos, one of them featuring Dan in one of their shirts. It's unknown how much he makes from the sponsorship. The final sponsor is another very common one for athletes, a CBD company. Who would have guessed? Hooker is sponsored by Enhanced CBD, a company that makes CBD oil and water-soluble products. The difference is the absorption rates, which are almost at 100% compared to the usual 5-10%. to 10%. Number 2. Family and Hobby There's nearly no information about Hooker's upbringing, but we'll try to do the best with what we have. The Kiwi was born in 1990 in Auckland, New Zealand. Hooker is really proud of his family name, and when Paul Felder made the obvious joke about it, Dan said, I don't know what the culture is like in America. Maybe it's a bit different. But where I'm from in New Zealand, especially in Maori culture, to insult someone's family name is to insult the whole line. He was a really combative kid and described himself as aggressive, saying that MMA saved him because it gave him a direction where he could channel his aggression, saying, this is the most constructive thing you could possibly do with your aggression. Dan got married to his longtime girlfriend Isabella in 2016 in Phuket Island, Thailand, a truly magical place. They welcomed their daughter Zoe Hooker to the world in 2018. In terms of hobbies, Dan is a family man, so spending time with his daughter and wife is a top priority for him. He does plenty of activities with his family, and before the pandemic hit, Dan was an avid traveler, eager to see the world with the people he loves, hence the wedding in Thailand. Even now, when he fights in the US, he makes sure to check out all the beautiful landmarks, most recently posting a photo of him and his daughter at the Red Rock Canyon National Park in Nevada. Another hobby of his is swimming, but spending time with his family, traveling, and fighting definitely takes a priority. One of his other hobbies is making fun of people on Twitter. Have a look at his funniest tweets. Number one, spending. So, since we said Dan likes traveling, it's no surprise that he spent a good buck traveling around before the start of the pandemic. Nowadays, since he fights internationally, his travel expenses are paid by the UFC, and he just gets to go to the landmarks of where he fights. In terms of houses, the details of Hooker's property or properties in New Zealand is unknown. However, when he accepted to take on the top contender Islam Makhachev on short notice, he made it public that the UFC accommodated him throughout the entire process, giving him a house to stay in the US in order to prepare for the fight. I mean, Hooker sacrificed his last chance to go back to New Zealand because of the voucher system the country has implemented with the pandemic. So the UFC's help is very understandable. Because of the pay increase for the Islam fight, Hooker revealed that he bought a house for his daughter with that money. The location is unknown, but here's what he had to say. I just bought my daughter a house, so it's like... <laughs> In terms of cars, Dan owns an Isuzu pickup truck, which is estimated to be worth around forty dollars to $50,000. The catch is that his pickup truck has his name and nickname painted all over the car. So if you ever see Hooker driving around, you'll definitely know it. In 2020, Dan also got a brand new red Hyundai Tucson Black Label Edition, which is again estimated to be worth around forty dollars to $50,000. Well, that wraps up today's video about the always game Dan Hooker. What is your favorite Dan Hooker fight? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to never miss a video. Until next time.